Good afternoon and welcome to the Just Grant session on post award management. We are happy to have you here today and hope to provide you with the information you need to manage these processes in Just Grants. We are recording the session today and we'll make the recording available to you as as we can, as soon as we can. My name is Bridget Milia, and today with me is Lisa Hartman, along with several Just Grants team members who will walk us through certain parts of the post award management. Before we start, we'd like to review the features in WebEx that will be important for you today. The meeting today includes a chat function for communicating directly with panelists. We ask that you use the chat feature if you are experiencing technical difficulties access, accessing the session and need assistance. We also offer a multimedia viewer as well as a Q&A feature. The Q&A feature is designed for sessions like ours in which we anticipate there will be questions. Please use the Q&A feature for your questions about the session content because WebEx groups the answers with the questions so you don't have to search through a lengthy chat log to find your answers. We have disabled video for all participants so that we have more system resources available to present the content. Should you need or want live captioning, you can locate the multimedia viewer by selecting the icon with three dots at the bottom right corner of, the sc of your screen. Open the multimedia viewer to access the captioning. We, also, we have also muted all attendees to reduce background noise. If you cannot hear, please click the arrow to the right of the unmute button at the bottom of your screen to select another audio option. If you are still not able to make the audio work, please consider calling in by phone using the number from the meeting invite details. We have activated the Q&A feature to answer your questions on the subject matter today. We have several Just Grants team members monitoring the Q&A and will provide answers in writing as much as possible. We will also stop to answer questions verbally during the session and will select questions that may require a greater level of detail than that provided in the chat or questions that have been asked a few times. As we receive and answer questions in the Q&A feature, you can, you can use the scroll bar to the right to review them. We are happy to answer any questions that, you, that help you navigate through Just Grants. However, we do get many questions that are better directed to your grant manager. Questions about requirements of your specific program should be directed to your grant manager as they are the best equipped to answer them within the context of your award. Today, we'll re today we will review the entity user roles that play a major role in relation to award management, grant award modifications, or GAMs, financial and performance reports, deliverables, and closeouts. We will discuss each topic, talk about a few troubleshooting tips, and break for questions after each topic. Lastly, we will share a few resources to help you and then go over any other questions you all may have. We are happy to answer any questions you have on how to perform steps using Just Grants. Due to a wide variety of programs and awards, we will not be able to address questions that are specific to your award requirements or questions about policy related to award management. Generally, these questions are best directed to your grant manager as they are the individuals with the most information on specific award requirements. At the end of the session today, based on your assigned Just Grants roles, you should be able to describe the entity user roles initiate and submit a, GA a grant award modification or GAM, submit a federal financial report and a performance report, close out an award, and locate Just Grant resources. The Just Grants resource website houses training material that you will need when using Just Grants. We have resources available for each of the topics we will address today on this site we will review these again towards the end of the presentation. 
If you are an applicant or an award recipient for an OVW award and need assistance, contact the OVW support desk at ovw.justgrantssupport at usdoj.gov or call 866-655-4482. To contact the Just Grants Technical Support Desk, you can send an email to justgrants.support at usdoj.gov. You can also call 833-872-5175 Monday through Friday between 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern Time or between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern Time on weekend or holidays. Please use the Just Grants support email or phone line anytime your Just Grant system is not working as, as intended. It is important to understand the entity user roles. There are six roles and each role has a, re has a unique access to Just Grants. For a user to accomplish the work they need to do, they may need to be assigned more than one role. Let's take a look at the five roles that are important to the post-award process. The Entity Administrator is a key role in Just Grants. This is the individual that manages all user access and maintains accurate information for the entity by coordinating updates in SAM.gov. The Entity Administrator role alone does not allow any edits to awards or applications in Just Grants, but this role is able to view all the information, awards, and applications in the system. The person assigned as the Entity Administrator will need to continuously support Just Grant users, and so should be someone that can, that can be available as needed to invite users, assign roles, assign or reassign awards and applications. The authorized representative is the only role that may allow may, that may accept or decline an award on behalf of the entity. This role must be assigned to someone in your organization with the legal authority to enter into a binding agreement with the Department of Justice and is legally authorized by your organization to agree to the award terms and conditions. The Grant Award Administrator generally handles programmatic requirements, including submitting performance reports, initiating and submitting GAMs, and initiating award closeout. The Alternative Grant Award Administrator currently has very limited capabilities. They cannot submit any programmatic reports or GAMs, however, they can initiate a GAM and a performance report. The Financial Manager submits federal financial reports on behalf of the organization. Let's take a look at federal financial reports. I believe we hey, have Bridget, uh, how do I locate and submit financial reports in just grants and then how do I locate and submit them if they're not in my work list. Thank you for those questions Lisa as discussed previously federal financial reports or FFRs are submitted by financial man are assigned by financial managers. It is important to understand that there is only one person in your entity that will be able to submit an FFR for a particular award, and that person is the financial manager specifically assigned to the award for which the report was created. That person should see the FFR in their work list as soon as it is generated by Just Grants. If you do not see the report in your work list, we will discuss ways to locate the FFR from within the, federal, the funded award. Thanks, Bridget. Um, so uh, we submitted a financial report and now we realize we need to go back and edit it. Is it possible to reopen, edit, and resubmit a financial report in Just Grants? Yes, it is possible to reopen a submitted FFR to edit it and resubmit if needed. However, there are some conditions around this capability. 
You can only reopen the most recent submitted report. All, all reports that were submitted prior to the most recent submitted report are no longer editable. We do have job aids and videos that will help walk you through the process of reopening, editing, and resubmitting an FFR. Now let's take a moment to go over financial reports and I'm going to hand it over to Lisa. Thanks, Bridget, for setting up all that terrific information about post award and financial report. I have a, I have a demo on financial report that may be helpful. Also, I see a question as to whether or not there's a template for the quarterly financial report and actually the template for the financial report um, will open when you're ready to submit your report. So we will. Um, so we will uh, take a look at that. So I'll start with the demo. Now, as Bridget mentioned, only financial managers submit FFRs. All current FFRs appear in the work list for that financial manager, so they're easy to locate. Now, to complete an FFR, you select the one you're working on from the work list by clicking that case ID. Uh, when you open anything from your work list, it opens in edit mode automatically. And here's where you'll see the template. You're gonna have to answer all these questions. Now, the first page of the FFR is read-only information, and it's pulled from the entity profile. You're going to see the, um, the award number there in, in Section 2, recipient organization, the DUNS number, and the EIN. Now, it should be noted that we are no longer going to see the DUNS number as of today. That's been replaced by a unique entity identifier, um, and that is effective today. We'll talk more about that. Um, you can move to the second page of the report by clicking the Continue button at the bottom or selecting the Report Information tab at the top. The recipient account number is an optional field. This is reserved for an identifying number assigned to the award by your organization. The report type will default to either quarterly or final depending on the grant period it applies to. And the reporting period is indicated in step nine. You'll select the basis of accounting that you use at your organization. Now, DOJ does not use um, these uh, uh, federal cash section of the report, which you're seeing uh, down here at the bottom. You also see the entire project grant period or the entire award period, as well as the reporting period for this particular report. Um, and again, this is a quarterly report, so you'll see the quarter within that larger project grant period that we're reporting on. So again, as we scroll down, uh, the DOJ does not use this federal cash section, so you'll see that those entries are grayed out. Um, as we scroll down a little bit, you'll notice the red asterisk in the field for 10E. This indicates a required field. All entries in this report are cumulative, meaning you're going to enter all um, expenses or all figures from the beginning of the award to the end of this reporting period. Uh, that is a change from our previous system, so it's, it's definitely worth noting. Um, as you make entries in these fields and tab through, you'll notice that just grants performs automatic calculations based on your entries. So we'll take a look now. Um, as we're scrolling down through these entries, if you have a question about what should be entered there, um, often you'll find a, a fairly detailed explanation of that field uh, directly below the field number. So that can help you determine what information should be entered in this field. Again, most new fields have red asterisks indicating that they're required, the ones that don't, um, are not required. However, if there is an entry to make, you'll need to make it. So we're just going to go ahead and enter zero for all of these um, because that is um, that's our situation for this financial report. And as we finish and we scroll down to the uh, bottom of this second page of the federal financial report, we'll find indirect expenses. Now, to enter indirect expenses, you'll select the little plus add item button that you see there. And then you'll enter information in all fields for each of the indirect expense lines you're reporting. And again, notice that as we move forward, Just Grants is going to continue to do calculations for you. You'll see the calculations being performed um, once you um, enter information in the rate column and the base column. It will automatically um, calculate the amount charged. And any of these fields in white are going to require your entry. Now, the calendar fields can be entered using that calendar icon, or you can just type the date in the field, whatever you like. Now that we're typing in the base amount, when you tab from the base amount field, 
it will multiply times that rate field and provide the amount charged there. And notice on the bottom of the page, there are totals that are being collected. Those totals um, will include totals of all line items if there are more than, if there's more than one line item on this report, that will show the entire, um, the entire uh, total for the report. We're going to click continue now to move to the third page, which is called remarks and certifications. Now you want to use the additional information field to add any comments. Um, in this case, we're going to indicate that we made an adjustment to a previous report. Um, and we're going to indicate that in this field. Again, this is just sort of test data. Um, you know, it's not, the data is not as important as the process of entering the data uh, on these uh, demos. Notice also there's a little button for upload supporting documents. So if you have something you want to upload to include with this financial report, this is where you would do that. And you would just choose your file for your workstation or shared drive. Now the submit button is in the bottom right corner, but before you select submit, you may want to scroll down and just review the certification section. It's automatically going to populate the name um, and date uh, of the person and the day that this is being submitted. Now, once you submit the FFR, you'll see one green bar that says, thank you. The next step has been routed appropriately. And you'll also see a status in purple and white above that that says pending UFMS. And then this pink banner is going to indicate the FFR is currently in pending UFMS status. So UFMS is a DOJ financial system. All FFRs are validated in the financial system prior to being routed for review. You will typically see the FFR in this status for about 24 hours, and then will automatically um, be moved along uh, to the first, um, the first reviewer uh, for your uh, report. All right, so moving to the next page, it is, it is important again to remember that all entries in the federal financial report are cumulative. Now, when entering data in field 10E, you're going to get a pop-up that appears confirming you've entered cumulative total. So if you answer yes to this question, indicating that you did enter, enter a cumulative total, you're going to be directed to the next data field. If you have not entered a cumulative total and you answer no to this question, you're going to be directed back to field 10E to correct it. Um, so that's, a, that's an important uh, point to remember, that not only does it have to be cumulative, this particular field, 10E, does an extra validation to be sure that you're entering cumulative information. Now, if the amount that you enter in 10E is less than the previously reported amount, you will receive a message indicating that you need to be sure the amount is correct. If it is, you're going to be required to provide an explanation in that additional information, Block 12, um, which is a text box, and uh, that will become then a required field. Um, once you have um, submitted FFRs, you're going to be able to find a list of every FFR that has been generated for your award and the status that those in which those FFRs exist. So when you open the entire funded award, there's a federal financial report section, which is highlighted here, and you can see all the report numbers um, to the left. You can see the type of FFR and you can see the reporting period. If you go to the right and you can see the status, um, you can see which ones have been um, which ones have been submitted, which ones are complete, which ones are open, and which ones may be delinquent. So delinquent would be um, a, a report becomes delinquent uh, 31 days after the end of the reporting period, and that's just uh, standard across the board. So I do see um, a couple of questions about the financial report. Well, actually, one is financial reports, the other one is GAMS, and we're going to talk about GAMS here in a moment. Uh, but again, the template for the quarterly financial report, again, as we saw, once you open the report, you have all of the fields displayed there. Now, if you'd like to take a look at the report before it's time for you to enter one and you don't have one that's not been generated for you yet, um, this is the form SF. 425. That's a standard government form, and you can um, you can find it on the internet. But SF-425 is the number of that form. So I'm going to go ahead and look through now the registration questions that came up, and um, I'm going to see if I can answer the ones that have to do right now with federal financial report. So one person has said, "I'm unable to submit a first performance report um, during the last three days of the month." The financial manager has not yet registered with ASAP. So 
So if we're talking about performance ma reports, uh, the financial manager is not the person that submits that report, so that would have um, no bearing. Um, on April 1st, we were able to submit the report. Was the issue likely related to ASAP's unavailability? So ASAP is the accounting system. That's where you draw down your funds. ASAP is connected to your federal financial report, but it is not connected to your performance report. Um, so ASAP would prevent you the last three days of every month, ASAP goes down to, um, to total up the month. And during the last three business days of every month, you're not going to be able to submit your FFR because ASAP is, um, is not available. Um, but you will the first day of every month. So if this person indicated performance report and actually meant financial report, then yes, it was ASAP. Um, that was the problem. And also if the financial manager had not registered with ASAP, then they would not be able to submit the report as well. So there is a link between Just Grants and ASAP, and um, that link needs to be um, fully active. Um, somebody asked uh, how to draw down funds, and we draw down funds using ASAP, um, but that is a separate, that's a separate system. This is just grants training. We're gonna train you how to manage your grants and awards. ASAP is a completely different system. It's actually run by the Department of Treasury, so the, the training that's provided is not provided by us. However, if you go to the ASAP website, they have training there that can help you determine how to draw down funds. Another one is for the final closing of grants, where do you see the final ASAP drawdown in the process? Should it be before or after the final FFR is submitted? Um, and um, once the final FFR is submitted, that is your final total. Once you close your award, you can't go back and, re, and, and rework your FFRs or your ASAP drawdown process. So I think the best thing to, to do would be to speak to your grant manager about that. My guess is they will tell you to do the ASAP drawdown first and then the final FFR. But for questions that are specific like that, it may be different from one award to, a net, to the next. So you may um, find it would be useful to contact your grant manager just to discuss that question with them for your particular award. Um, let's see. Uh, ASAP did not send registration to the grantee. Um, the grantee is still not registered with ASAP. That's not a, that's not a, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not an issue that we can help with. You will need to contact ASAP's um, uh, customer support. Uh, we don't have any um, access to ASAP in terms of um, troubleshooting issues. So they, like, again, they're a separate federal agency and a separate, you know, a separate application altogether. Um, but if you go on the ASAP website, you should be able to contact their customer support. Um, let's see. Let's see, I think we have a lot of GAM questions. Um, and so that's it. So we're going to go ahead, unless uh, anything has come up uh, recently, um, Bridget or um, Jeff in the chat that you can see. Chat or Q&A questions? We do have a few in the Q&A. Okay. Let's um, go ahead and, and I believe you already answered this one, but I just want to make sure. Is there a template for a quarterly financial report? Yes, that template is uh, is available when you open the qu quarterly report. You answer the same questions each time. Um, but uh, and if you want to see that before the quarterly report is generated, um, just uh, Google SF-425. It's a standard government report, and you should be able to um, access something there. Great. What happens if a financial reporter is out for a period related to injury or illness? So the, your entity administrator can reassign um, a new financial manager to your award, and that's a highly recommended practice. So um, if somebody's going to, you know, somebody goes um, on unexpected leave like that, um, then another person will have to act as the financial manager for that um, particular award. So that person will need to be assigned the role uh, financial manager, and then be specifically assigned to that award, and. Then and fill it out. But if they don't do that, then the um, the financial uh, then the financial report may become delinquent, and it may impact your ability to draw down funds. Okay. 
Can you repeat financial? Barb, can you um can you clarify your question of can you repeat financial manager role, please? We'll get more information on that and get you sure. a, a better answer for that. Um, we do have a few more. If you have a if you have time, Lisa, or if you want to sure. move forward, just let us know. All right. Is there another role that can enter the financial report without submitting it? Our financial manager would like another. Oh, sorry, another person to enter the report and have her go in to verify and report and submit it. Well, actually, no, there can only be one financial manager assigned at a time to an award, and that's the only person that can enter data and submit it. So, if you'd like to have, but however, there's, there's a, a workaround. If you'd like to have another person enter the, the data and then just have that financial manager, assin, uh, you know, submit it, you can do that, but you're going to have to have two people assigned the role financial manager. The, um, the entity administrator will need to assign the person who's going to enter the data um, to that award. They can enter the data, then the entity administrator is going to have to reassign that role on that award to the other financial manager in order to submit. So it can be done, but it's a little bit Okay. We have uh, one more. Can we have one hold remaining on our grant it's it's for 50k and the condition is the final programmatic report we have submitted the final program report and the final ffr can anything move forward for the closeout if the hold isn't removed um you know that's a question i would uh, prefer that you uh, consult with your grant manager on that uh, particular question uh, they're going to be more um, in a position to be able to help you out with the specifics of that um, of that of that hold. Okay. Um, so going back to the financial manager role, it's still unclear to me what are the limitations of the financial manager. How does one how does the one person get assigned? Suppose you have five active awards. So the financial manager's limitations are the only thing the financial manager can do is view information in the award and submit the, the FFR. That's all they're, they're, they're doing in the award. That person is assigned by your entity administrator. That's the one person in your organization that manages users and assigns them to awards. If you have five active awards, it's okay. As long as you have been assigned the role financial manager, the entity administrator can assign you all five awards. If you have different people being financial, the entity administrator makes those assignments per award. So um, we do have um, another virtual Q and A session on Tuesdays regarding um, financial uh, regarding entity administration. So it might be uh, worthwhile having your entity administrator attend that session if they have questions. Um, so there you are, um, Bridget. Would you would you do me a favor and and if you're not speaking, uh, if you could just mute. Because I think because I'm on speakerphone, I think we're getting feedback. It's not you. It's it's my speaker. All right. Thank you. So I do see the question. Can we recommend that there be two financial managers? So there's some flexibility for organizations. Currently, um, we don't have any uh, immediate plans to expand the ability for multiple financial managers uh, because you have the. Um, the capability within your organization to reassign um, to reassign the financial report from one person to another. Um, currently, that is the um, that is the process. Um, it has been mentioned before, um, but again, I, um, I I don't know that we have any immediate plans to make that change. All right. Um, anything further, Bridget? Oh, just I think one more. Um, when when you choose the print option on the FFR, it isn't formatted too well. Is there something we are doing wrong when we need to give the FFRs to our auditors and others? Um, no, there's not uh, something you're doing wrong. Uh, there uh, there are um, some changes that are in the works for printing the FFR. Um, it is a, you know, it, printing is a very difficult um, consideration, um, you know, um, in, you know, in any computer system because of the 
the wide variety of printers and networks and things like that 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 are you know that are are actually printing the uh, application. So we acknowledge that the, that you may find um, some print options. Um, and uh, right now, if you are really struggling with it, you can contact our um, our user support uh, team and see if they can help you with that. Um, anything else on federal financial reports right now, Bridget? Not for federal financial reports. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, oh, I see a clarification. The organization can have more than one person assign the role of financial manager, but only one of those people can be assigned to an award as the financial manager. And that, yes, that is correct, Rachel. Um, and I see that there's a question about starting to use the funds for the grant. That is uh, not the in, within the scope of this training. Um, if you have particular questions about your particular award or your particular funds and that kind of thing, you must contact your grant manager. Um, that's not a question we can answer in this particular venue. All right, let's move forward and um, we'll take a look now at performance reports and award deliverables. So um, the award deliverables are a related topic, but we're really going to spend most of our time on performance reports. So we do get some questions about performance reporting. Yes, Lisa, how do I locate and submit performance reports in Just Grants? And then how do I report performance measure data? So these are two good questions and we do um, answer these a lot. And that performance reports are submitted by the assigned grant award administrator um, on your award. If you are the assigned grant award administrator, then the performance report is going to appear in your work list once it's automatically generated by Just Grant. Now, in a few minutes, we'll demonstrate how to locate a performance report in your work list, as well as how to locate a performance report if it doesn't appear in your work list for some reason. Now, there are two methods of submitting performance measure data. And to be clear, performance measure data and performance reports are not the same thing. Um, the performance measure data um, is a set of questions um, that align with your project, and you'll be expected to answer those questions on your ongoing progress within your, within your uh, project um, on a, the, whatever frequency your uh, award is, is working. The requirements for the frequency and the requirements for your data are determined by the grant program that's offering you funding. Now, some grant programs usually submit performance measure data by attaching a PDF file from an external system, and one of the ones that we use a lot is Performance Measurement Tool, or PMT. Now, other grant programs have a question set that's actually built into the performance report in Just Grant. So the next question is going to be, well, how do I know which method I'm supposed to use? And in a moment, I'm going to do a demonstration of the performance measure process showing both methods of submitting your, your performance measure data. And we'll show you how you can tell which one you'll need to use uh, in your reporting. So, Lisa, how do I locate and submit a performance report if it's not in my work list? Well, that's a good question, and that happened uh, several months ago. We were having a problem with that, although I believe it's been uh, generally corrected. But if this, um, if this problem uh, comes up again, and you're the assigned grant award administrator, and you can't see the performance report in your work list, you can always access the performance report by opening the funded award. And I'll show you later on how you can open the funded award as a grant award administrator and you can um, submit performance reports or grant award modifications directly from within the funded award. So I'll show you how to do that here uh, shortly. Um, another option, um, you can either um, open the funded award and select just the performance report you want to submit or you can open the funded award and, and um, select an option to sort of edit all there is uh, available to you within the funded award. So we'll take a look at that here in a moment. Now, as a reminder, performance reports must be submitted in sequential order. So if you have a couple of outstanding performance reports, you must submit the oldest one first before you can submit the most recent. So where do I submit a deliverable and what type of document can be attached and is there a size limit? 
So all good questions. So deliverables are files that you'll upload to answer um, a request um, from uh, from DOJ um, that that uh, that you've been uh, ex that you're expected to uh, to respond to. Now award deliverables are submitted by the grant award administrator or the alternate grant award administrator. And you can find the deliverable section under the performance report tab in the funded award. It's at the bottom of that page, and I'll demonstrate that. When you're uploading files into Just Grants, you can attach Word documents, Excel files, or PDF files. The file names are limited to 500 characters, and the file size is limited to 25 megabytes. So you can upload as many 25 megabyte files as you want, but you can't go over that limit for an individual file. There's no limit to the number of files, however, that you can upload. So let's take a moment um, to go through a demo on how to submit a performance report. And again, just to clarify, we're gonna be talking about performance report, which is the actual report that's submitted to uh, DOJ. Within that report, you're going to include performance measured data. Now, in some cases, you're going to include that performance measured data as a file that you're gonna upload from another system where you, you're tracking your, your data. Or so in some cases, you're going to include your performance measured data as a question set within the report, uh, the performance report itself. So again, performance reports are the submitting of the report to uh, DOJ and included within that report in one of two ways is your performance measure data. Now performance reports appear in the work list for the grant award administrator assigned to the award. And the best way to begin is to select the case ID link for the report you're planning to submit. Um, and the case ID link you can see is on the left. Now you might notice also that in the center of that, uh, that display, there's an urgency field. And you can tell um, whether, you can tell how um, quickly these performance reports are due. Um, it's the, it's the colors can be handy. Um, a report with a green um, circle by the urgency is, uh, has plenty of time. Uh, by the yellow, it means that you're coming close to the time where you need to submit. And if that urgency has a red circle next to it, it means that it's past due and your report is delinquent. Now performance reports, um, delinquent performance reports can um, cause, um, cause your funds to be put on hold uh, until your performance report has been submitted. So it's, um, if you're looking at past due reports, um, it's in your best interest to um, begin to submit them you know, as you can. Now, once you open the performance report, you'll see at the top of the page um, information about the report, the solicitation, the project period, your DOJ grant manager, your grant award administrator from within your organization, all sorts of uh, information there. Below that, in the performance report section, you see the start and end date of this report, uh, reporting period, and then the due date, which is always 30 days after the end date of the reporting period. You can be uh, submitting either a regular or a final report, and the report is going to default to um, the type of report that's uh, based on, you know, whether or not the end date of the performance report is the same as the end date of the award. That's the only time that you'll have a final report. Final report is only generated on the very last um, reporting period of the award itself. Uh, we don't do final reports at the end of the year, only at the end of the award. If you try to change this to final and, um, and uh, you're gonna get a big message that says, are you sure? Because um, if you change it to final in error, you'll have to get our support team to help you return it back to a regular report. Now under here, complete performance measure question set, you'll see that there is um, a menu option here. If there's a link there, that is the indicator that you must in, uh, submit your performance measure data in the report as a question set. And we'll see that demonstrated briefly. There is no link here, so that's an indicator, uh, the indicator that you're gonna need to upload your performance measure data uh, from another system in which you've entered that information. Now you can put comments in the comments field. And once you've finished, you'll have to scroll down. There's a, there's a save option um, at the bottom of the performance report. Click save and that will then apply your comments uh, to comment history and um, they'll be visible to everyone who opens this report. Now you can upload an attachment and for, for this scenario where you're uploading your performance measure data as an attachment from another system, um, you're gonna select the file 
and it will allow you to search your workstation or your shared drive for a PDF or an Excel or a Word document. Um, most cases, this is going to be a PDF you're going to upload. Um, if you need to change the, the visual name in, in um, Just Grants about this report, you can certainly do that. And this one's just, we're just um, indicating which date this report is being, uh, is being entered for. The category must be performance report. You cannot, you should not change that. If you change it, you'll have trouble um, indicating that you've actually uploaded the performance report. So once you've uploaded that uh, performance measure data, um, you can either cancel, there's a little option there on the bottom left to cancel, and that will um, erase everything you've done and return you back to the work list as if you'd never accessed this. There's a save button that will save everything you've done, but not submit it just yet in case there's something you wanna do uh, before uh, submitting. And then finally that submit button will actually submit this performance report with the uploaded performance measure data to, the, uh, to, um, uh, to your grant manager for review, and that will begin the review process. Now we'll click Actions and Close, and that's just good practice to always use the Actions menu and the Close button to close anything in Just Grants. Now on this next uh, half of the, um, of the uh, demo, we're gonna go ahead and look at uh, submitting a performance report where your performance measure data is included as a question set in Just Grants. And again, these are two different things. Completing a question set does not mean you submitted a performance report and we get a lot of confusion about that. So we wanna make sure that this is all very clear. Now in this case, you still see the header here, you see the performance report, but now you see in the complete performance measure question set section, there is a link. And this link is how you're going to enter your performance measure data. The link is not to the performance report, it's to the uh, data entry uh, section of the report. So um, we'll go ahead and click that. Now this, uh, even if you're uploading a, um, a, a third party file now, ultimately I think the idea is that most awards are gonna move to this question set that's contained within the, um, the performance report. So when you open the question set, and at the top of the page, you see the name of the question set. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It, it has to do with the specific award um, that we're looking at, and this determines the questions that you're gonna be asked and you're gonna be expected to answer. Every award has its own set of questions. So please don't pay a lot of attention to these specific questions. This is just sort of generic data. Your award will have um, questions that are directed towards your project. Um, so when we first open this, we see all of the questions and um, no answers. If you wanna print these questions to circulate within your organization, you can go up to the actions menu. And when you get to the actions menu, you'll find a print option and you'll be able to, to uh, just print a list of those questions. And once you're ready to answer those questions, you see at the top of the page, there's this task assignment you gotta click that begin link in order to edit anything in Just Grants. So this is the um, question set. Again, not the performance report. This is where you're measuring your data and providing all the data for your project to your grant manager for review. Uh, there are five pages in this one. You can see at the top, um, BJA award admin, um, and it goes through to these five pages. All pages must be opened and um, mandatory field uh, entered. So as we're looking through, you see we have radio buttons where you have one answer uh, per question. You have check boxes where you can have multiple answers per question. We have text boxes. You can copy and paste from other, um, other systems like Word. Um, we also have, uh, in some cases, there are questions that your answer will determine the next question. Um, so um, we'll take a look at that. And then you'll see the red asterisk on every question that's required in order to be able to submit this question set and be able to ultimately submit the performance report. Notice we're using the uh, continue button, but you can also navigate page to page using those column headers. And actually the column headers are your, your, your most reliable navigation tool. Uh, so in this section, we have a number of drop downs and check boxes and things like that. So I think I'm gonna move forward a little bit in the interest of time and just make sure that we have time to talk about everything we need to today. I'm gonna to move us to the last page. Now, I'd like to draw your attention on this last page to the fact that there's a blue button down here. This button says finish. It is not saying submit. 
Um, finish means that when you click this button, you've finished entering all of the answers to your performance measure data question. Um, all that means is that you have provided answers to the questions you've been asked. It does not mean you've submitted a performance report. We're still not, th this is, a, this is a, a part of the performance report, but it is not the entire performance report. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and let that finish button be clicked here in the demo. And once we do that, then you'll be able to see that we will um, return back to our question set um, summary page where you can see both the questions and the answers. And there they are, these are the original questions, but you see the answers have already been, um, been uh, entered here. So now if you wanna print this again, the actions and the print button is the best way to print the questions with the answers, um, if you like. Notice that the, it says results completed. It doesn't say submitted. It means that your question set has been completed. And as you can see here now, we're returned to the performance report and you can keep track of where you are by looking at the top of the page, it says performance report. You see the question set here um, is uh, here. And if we click um, a refresh button here under the actions menu, it will uh, change the status of that performance report to results completed, uh, uh, sorry, that's the performance measure data, to results completed, sorry. Um, so, yeah, that um, action menu refreshing that, we're going to do that one more time, uh, refresh that action menu. And you see now that the status of the performance measure question set is resolved completed, but if you look at the top, the status of the performance report is new. So, in order to submit the performance report, we're going to have to um, scroll down and notice we still have another comment section. We can uh, do that. You can reopen the question set if you want to change your answers on that question set. You can enter comments. You can upload files as you need. And then you can submit the performance report. Once you submit that performance report, notice that the status at the top now is pending review. That's how you know you've submitted your performance report. We do get so many people that finish that question set and feel like they're done. And then they're, then they're surprised to find that their, their performance report is delinquent. So it's really important to understand the difference between the two. You have to submit and get your performance report and pending review in order for it to be, um, you know, and, uh, properly approved. Now, if you want to locate a list of pending and submitted performance reports, you want to open the funded award and you can navigate to the performance management section. You can open any report by selecting the report number in the left-hand column, and then you'll be able to visually uh, review those uh, reports. Um, so, Bridget, do we have any questions in the Q&A that might have to do with uh, performance reporting? Mm, for performance reporting, yes. When you suggest the PI and her, his department, or the central office representative submit a performance per before when do, hmm, hold on. Suggest that the PI. I'm not sure I understand that question. I'm sorry. Um, we might need a little bit of clarification. I'm sorry, sometimes uh, the the chat just shifted. Uh, that's a, Bridget, I understand the term PI. Um, so a PI is someone who, um, you know, who, who enters, I think, in, in general, enters the data in a performance report. So go ahead and read the question. Okay, um, would you suggest that the PI and her, his department, or the central office representative submit performance report when due? Um, we, we don't, we have no guidance for you on that. I mean, the, the, the person who submits the performance report is, um, designated by your organization based on your uh, needs. We don't have any, um, yeah, we just don't have any, any guidance for you on that. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, is there a submitter role to submit for the FM to the financial manager to sign, sign, submit? For the financial manager, um, let's see. Uh, let me see if I can find that question. 
Um, I'm not sorry. Can you read that question again? I can't find it here in that Q and A. Is there a submitter role to submit for the financial manager to um, the FM to sign uh, submit? No, there's only one financial manager. Uh, the financial manager assigned to the award um, is the only one that can um, both enter data and submit it. So we don't have we don't have a multi-step process in in terms of submitting these reports. If you in your, within your organization want to have somebody else um, enter you know enter the data and then have your financial manager um, submit it, you can manage that yourself by um, assigning the, the financial manager role in just grants to both of those people, but your entity administrator is going to have to reassign the award, the financial manager on the award um, to the person, first of all, who's going to submit the data, or is going to enter the data, and then reassign it to the other person with the financial manager role who will submit. Um, so it's, it's entirely managed um, by your organization. Thank you, Lisa. Um, what is the DOJ processing time of a GAM review and approval? Um, that depends on the type of GAM and your program. So there's no there's no um, hard and fast rule on that. Um, but your the when you submit a GAM, you submit it to your grant manager. So if you feel like it's it's a longish time before you're getting the the approval, uh, you should contact your grant manager and ask when you can expect to 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 have uh, an answer because your grant manager is the one that follows your GAM from beginning to end. Okay, um, I'm not sure you can answer this one, Melissa. But if the if awards begin in October of 2021 and end in September of 2023, why are the reporting periods from October to June and then July to December? Um, the, the reporting periods are determined by your program. That's not something I can answer. Your <laughs> grant manager may have a better answer for you, but, um, but performance report performance reporting frequencies are determined by your funding agency. So, um, so they're not all the same. Some, some, um, some awards, uh, run on a biannual, um, they run on a biannual, uh, basis starting in January through December. Some awards run on a biannual basis starting from the fiscal year, which in, in the government starts October through September. Uh, some of them run on quarterly, some of them are annual. So, you know, um, that's a determination made by the, the, the organization offering funding based on their own, you know, their own um, processes. So um, I would direct that one to your grant manager. They may have a better explanation for your particular award than I could uh, provide. Speaking of grant managers, how long should I expect to wait to hear back from my grant manager? I've reached out to them and not heard back. Um, I would think, you know, grant managers um, should um, respond, you know, a week to 10 days. Um, Perhaps uh, if there's somebody from uh, from uh, OAM that could uh, provide um, an alternate contact in in the Q and A, um, that would be great. So I'm going to ask somebody on our panel to provide um, another another way of contacting um, DOJ to get your answers. Um, yeah, this is Tanu. I um, if I can. Receive the person's name and their email address. That will be great. And then I can assist them. Thank you. If you can pre uh, uh, provide that privately um, in the chat to uh, either all panelists or to T I N U K E, uh, last name A K I N J E. Um, that way you won't have to post it into the entire group. Anything else so far, Bridget? Yes. In closeout, what's the correct order? Do you ASAP slash draw down funds first, then FFR, then then final performance report, or can the final performance report be completed before the drawdown and the final FFR? So that's a question, uh, you know, that's a question that seems to me like it might be different based on your on your funding agency. Um, your funding office. So I would, I would actually ask you to ask your grant manager that. I don't want to 
because I, I have I have um, answers for how you use just grants, but some of these questions about when do I or why do I um, are actually questions that are more better that are better directed to your grant manager, um, because the answer might be different from one office to another. So um, I, I don't have that sort of level of detail on how you know the grants are managed. Um, please do reach out to your grant manager for that. And I see another one uh, on that same topic. I found it difficult to communicate with the grant manager from OVW via the system. Should communications be outside of just grants? Yes, we provide the email address for your grant manager in the award. Um, that's probably your best means of um, of contacting uh, your your grant manager. Is just you know use the the email address that you see in your funded award. Um, we provide that in several places uh, for you to do that. You, Lisa, um, can, you, can you print a copy of the performance report after it is submitted? Yes, uh, you just use the actions menu and the print option. And we do still plan on discussing how to submit the we've uh, we already reviewed how to submit deliverables. Not yet, but uh, that's, yet. That's, uh, that'll be. Okay, yep, that'll be um, coming up. Can more than one person be authorized to submit this data? No, again, you know, this is, um, we've mentioned this before, there can only be one, um, one, uh, actually in performance reporting, you can have an alternate grant award administrator that will be able to um, enter, but not submit. And then the grant, uh, the grant award administrator will be able to submit. So in the, in the, in the world of the performance report, you can have two people, um, one alternate grant award administrator and um, the, um, Grant award administrator. So the alternate can initiate but cannot submit. Um, the grant award administrator can do both. I do have a few questions on uh, what if a file does not upload after you select from your documents? This happened to me the last time I attempted to upload a document. And moving along with that, um, we do have another question. Is there one on one support available to navigate just grants? I'm having difficulty uploading deliverables. So, if you're having difficulty um, with something like that, um, I, the first thing I would do is direct you to our training materials because we have, you know, we have step by step instructions on how to um, upload deliverables within our training materials. And we'll talk about that, um, you know, when we get to our resources towards the end of this uh, session. Um, <clears throat> so, that, uh, that would be my first recommendation. Um, the second one might be to contact your grant manager. And if you're having technical issues, your grant manager is the person to ask um, programmatic questions like, you know, why do I do this or what do you need me to upload? But if you're having difficulty, if you followed our step by step instructions and you still can't upload, then you can contact our support uh, group. So maybe we can hold some of these questions. Um, we do have about a half an hour left and I have quite a bit of material to uh, walk through. So I'd like to go ahead if we can and move forward so we make sure that we get uh, the information that you need. Um, but we'll also, we'll come back at the end and address any um, remaining questions that we have uh, if we haven't hit them already. So let's talk a little bit about award deliverables and um, we will, I'll just do a quick demonstration. Now award deliverables are files that you upload into just grants, typically based on a request from your grant manager for specific, um, you know, information. Now, in this case, we're going to go to the awards menu here. Um, and we're going to locate the award that we want to upload our files into. <clears throat> so once we select that, um, we're going to be here in this, um, in this menu. And I want to talk about this just briefly, because when you open um, an award from your um, work list, because the, 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 uh, the work is in your work list, the performance report, the federal financial report, uh, they're in your work list, it's because you are the person assigned to do that task and only you. And when you open something from your work list, it's going to open automatically and be ready for you to edit. Now, when you open this, um, when you open a funded award from the awards menu, um, there are a number of different people that are involved in these awards and a number of different tasks. And so you're going to have to indicate that you're the person that is allowed to do this particular task. So. When, you'll, when you open the funded award from that awards list, you'll always see this assignments page. 
and you'll see the actions that need to be taken now. So you look here and you see that there is, um, there is a link for the performance report, uh, for instance, here. And on the right, there's a begin link to open that particular performance report. Um, this is how you're going to open and edit that particular performance report from within the funded award. Um, only the grant award administrator assigned to this award can click that begin link. Nobody else can do it. Um, but um, you know, you're going to need to click a begin link in order to be able to edit. Same thing if you're going to do a grant award modification. You can scroll down this page and find that funded award, but unless you click this begin link, you're not going to be able to edit anything in that award. It's going to be read only. Now, this programmatic begin link that you see down here, which is fifth from the top, if you look over here, that programmatic begin link is very special because for a grant award administrator who can do performance reports, grant award modifications, award deliverables, closeouts, this person can do all of those different things. That begin link opens access, uh, edit access to all of that. So hitting this programmatic begin link is going to be your best option if you're going to do award deliverables or GAMs or close out early. So that begin link. Um, we'll then open the funded award and it will allow you to, um, again, access um, all of the uh, PRs. So there are your performance reports and you can see uh, which ones are new and pending. But award deliverables is below that and it's just adding attachments. So we're going to select the file from your workstation or shared drive to add this attachment. And in this case, we're going to go looking for something specific and we're going to attach something called a, a supporting documentation. So once we do that, it's going to be important for you to select a file category. We have a lot of questions about file categories, and these are so important because the file category determines where in the funded award this file is going to be kept. So when you click attach, you'll see that the file category that we have here is the deliverable. Typically, the deliverables are going to be programmatic deliverables, requests from your grant manager to provide some piece of information that lines up with your objectives. We also have an opportunity here to upload a, um, an award, mod award condition compliance deliverable. And this is a special thing where you're uploading, um, you're uploading a document that's going to bring you into compliance with one of the conditions of the award. For instance, if one of the conditions says that within six months, the financial manager and the grant award administrator must complete this particular training course, then your, if, if that six months goes by and you haven't uploaded the certificate that proves that you took that course, then that condition is going to be in a non-compliance and, and you may wind up um, having some of your friends uh, put on hold. So those award conditions are, are important. And if you look at the uh, top of the funded award, you see award package to the left and award conditions second to the left. You can read through those conditions and just make sure you're in compliance because if you're not, again, they can withhold um, your fund. So those are reward conditions. Um, do we have anything that um, has been asked or answered regarding um, award conditions that we can take a look at? We do have, I'm not sure if this fits in, uh, Lisa, or I'm not sure if you can answer this, but I just wanted to get it out there. We have been asked to move our MOW partners from subcontractors to procurement. Could you go through how could we do this and what's involved in terms of payment? This sounds more like a um, something that would be better handled by a grant manager. That's exactly what it is, Bridget. You're right on that. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's not really a just grant step-by-step -step question. That is um, really something that you need to ask your grant manager. You need to be in communication with the grant manager in order to understand the best way to approach your particular award. Um, I could answer that question for you, but another program office might do things entirely differently. So you just need to you know, be in constant contact with your grant manager on questions like this. Yes, and um, can you show again how to find if there are any grant, if there are grant conditions? Um, I'll show you the grant conditions in the closeout piece at the end. I don't have that in my demo currently. Perfect. Um, but I'll show you the board conditions um, in when we do the demo for closeout. All right, anything else? Not on the subject. 
All right. And by the way, regarding grant conditions, there are always grant conditions. Um, so every uh, virtually, uh, as far as I know, every award has conditions that must be agreed to and, and followed through on. So there will always be grant conditions. Um, all right, let's move on to grant award modifications because I've, I've noticed a lot of questions um, about this and we do have a couple of questions to start um, the topic. Yes, Lisa, what types of GAMs can be submitted in Just Grants and how can I initiate and submit a GAM in Just Grants? So these are these are really kind of very standard questions on GAMs. Now, grant award modifications are completed and submitted by the assigned grant award administrator on the award, and all GAMs must be approved by DOJ personnel. Now, an alternate grant award administrator can initiate but can't submit a GAM. So if you want an alternate grant award administrator to enter the enter the information and then um, and then have a grant award administrator review it and submit it, you can do that as long as you have both of those people assigned to the award. Now, one of the questions we get from grantees, um, as Bridget brought up, is what types of GAMs can be submitted in Just Grants? And there are actually three categories of GAMs, programmatic, financial, and project period extension. And there are two types of programmatic GAMs, scope change and programmatic cost. And typically, if the, the size or scale of your project is changing, you can modify the award to take that into account. Um, so, you would do that using the scope change GAM. The programmatic cost GAM is going to help you sort of move money around in the programmatic cost uh, area. Now, financial GAMs are budget modification and sole source GAMs. So, the budget modification GAM is the one that we're going to demonstrate today, um, but we do have um, step by step um, e learning videos and step by step printed guides for, um, for using all of these types of GAMs on our resources website, which we'll show you here at the end of the session. Now, another question we find is how a grantee can initiate and submit a GAM. And again, they're initiated and submitted by the grant award administrator. And in order to submit a GAM or initiate one, you have to open that funded award using that programmatic begin link, which is key. And then you navigate to the grant award modification tab to initiate it. Once the GAM has been initiated, it's gonna appear in the work list for the assigned grant award administrator for updates or for further work. Okay, give Lisa one moment. She was logged. She'll be calling back in. Hello. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can, Lisa. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. WebEx decided I was done talking. Um, so um, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead through this um, demo on how to initiate a GAM. And this is um, just to, to get started. So as we saw before, there are, um, there are uh, multiple types of GAMs. So in the interest of time today, we're gonna to demonstrate how to initiate any type of GAM and then show you um, the steps through the budget modification GAM. So all GAMs are initiated from the grant award modification tab of the funded award. So we're gonna start in this awards menu to locate the award. Um, and again, we're doing this because there is no, there's nothing in the work list right now in your, in your work list to, to start with because you haven't initiated the GAM. Now again, we're gonna use this programmatic begin link. And this again is critical. If you don't click a begin link to open this funded award in edit mode, you're just gonna be read only and it's very frustrating because you're not gonna be able to initiate anything. Now, once you open that programmatic begin link, you're going to navigate to the grant award modification tab. And from here, you're going to select the type of award or type of award change you want to make. And again, the financial project period extension or programmatic. Now, to select programmatic, your options are programmatic cost or scope change. So you select the award type and the subtype. And once you do that, then you'll be able to select that create new GAM button, which is going to allow you to, um, to uh, 
complete a GAM. So now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna demonstrate just the one type of GAM today. Now each of the GAM subtypes have different options for selection. And again, we have training materials related to each type of GAM, but we're gonna look at the budget modification GAM today. And it's one of the financial types. Just select financial and then the budget modification subtype. Once you get the, the type and the subtype, you see that that create new GAM button opens and is, uh, is going to be available for you to use. Before we do that, I just wanna show you that we have in progress GAMs and completed GAMs, so you have a, a, a selection of all of the, the modifications that have been made to this award. So the budget modification GAM displays on the left, the budget categories, um, second to left, the approved budget that we're currently working with, and on the far right, we have the editable fields, which you're going to change to be the, the amount you want the categories to change to. So you want the, uh, so what we're gonna do is move $5,000 from one category to another. And in this budget modification GAM, you can't add or remove fund, funding from the total. You just gotta work within the, uh, the total federal amount that you have in order to um, make this work. It's gotta balance, it's gotta be the same amount uh, beginning and end. We're just moving money around. Um, you can um, you can locate the DOJ financial guides in here if you want additional guidance. And you must type a justification for why you're modifying your award. If you need to upload an indirect cost rate agreement, if that's relevant to this change, you can do that. Or other financial GAM documentation, you can upload documents there as well. So you can um, provide additional you know justification or supporting documentation there. The grants management comment uh, field is where you can communicate with your grant manager. This should not be used as a conversation. This is just comments that you can add that will um, you know, help to explain your, your process to the uh, grant manager. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and um, go back just a brief bit and show you that um, once you put um, comments in this comments field, you select add, that applies the comments and your grant manager and everybody who approves this or reviews and approves this GAM will see that. Bottom right, we have that cancel button, which will erase everything we've done and return you back without having made any changes. You can delete a GAM at this point before you submit it, and that will allow you then to register the fact that you started this GAM, but then chose to delete it. You can save the GAM or you, um, you can submit it. And once you submit it, it is um, sent to your grant manager for review. Now for organizations that have been awarded funding with a budget and conditional clearance, DOJ may request a budget clearance scam so that the grant award administrator can edit that budget. The grant award administrator will find a change requested budget clearance GAM in their work list in this case. So if you've just uh, accepted an award and your budget is still in conditional clearance, you're gonna wanna be on the lookout for this change requested GAM. And you can see in the um, upper left image that uh, the bottom uh, GAM that's highlighted has a case status pending change request. That's what you're looking for. Now, when a grant award administrator locates a budget clearance GAM in their work list, they're gonna need to open it to update the budget. You'll use the sort and filter features to find the, the modification and select the case ID link to open it. Once you open it in the upper right uh, image, you'll navigate to the grants management comments section to see the changes that were requested. Now that get that grants management comments section exists at the very bottom of this modification. So you're gonna to wanna to scroll all the way down to the bottom, read the changes that they're requesting you to make, and then we're gonna go ahead and show you how to make those changes. So once you have an understanding of the, um, the changes that you're requested to make, you're gonna to navigate to the budget detail summary view that you see at the bottom right, and you're gonna open a little carrot in the triangle to the left of the category um, and then you'll see the individual line items and you'll be able to edit, to add and delete. Now, once you open the line item that needs to be edited, you can edit any uh, field there in the line item itself. You can add a new line item by selecting the add button, or you can delete a line item by selecting the little trash can icon to the right of the line. A narrative information in the additional narrative field is required for any budget category with a line item. Once you've finished and you've updated, um, you've updated all of the different lines that you've been requested to uh, modify, then you're gonna click submit, and then you'll, you'll uh, find that that project budget summary will display your updated totals. Um, so the, um, 
the project, the budget summary view is what you're actually currently going to be working with. Um, once you do that, you'll want to, you'll need to actually navigate to the total project cost section, which you see in the uh, right hand image. And you're going to need to um, verify that the federal funds, um, the match amount, um, the federal funds plus the match amount plus the program income amount equal the total project cost. That is, and you see the total project cost is directly above that green um, box. So those three fields, if you have all three, are going to need to equal that total project cost. If there's a discrepancy between those two totals, you will not be able to submit the GAM. It must, it must equal. Um, once you do that, you're going to navigate um, to the budget financial documentation section. If you need to upload an attachment, or select a document from just grants um, that you've captured to, um, to uh, include in your GAM. Um, if you select the um, entity doc, that is going to be a list of documents that are captured in just grants that apply to all awards uh, or applications in your organization, such as like a, an indirect cost rate agreement or a 5013C um, documentation, that sort of thing. You'll check the um, the attachments you want to include and, sl and select submit. If you are uploading something using the upload doc button, that allows you to locate, um, you know, additional files on your workstation or shared drive. Again, if you need to upload something um, that's outside of just grants, this is how you do it. You select the file. Um, and again, it's very important everywhere in just grants, everywhere to um, make sure that you select the proper attachment category. It's the category that determines where Just Grants is going to file this document. So if you're uploading an indirect cost rate agreement related to the budget, then you want to look for the budget indirect cost rate agreement category because that's where you want that to be filed within Just Grants. So once you've selected a category, you can click attach and then it becomes part of that modification. Um, and uh, once you do that, then you'll click the submit button for the GAM and you'll submit it back to DOJ. Um, and you'll see here that that GAM will remain here in your work list, um, you know, in, in the status until it's approved. And once it's approved, you'll see it in the funded award under the um, completed GAM section. Now, if you uploaded your, um, your budget uh, during the application process as, a, um, as an Excel spreadsheet, which is not very common, um, you'll do a similar process where you will um, where you um, uh, will locate the GAM and then you'll find the comments um, in, the, uh, in the GAM itself. And in the next case, you'll use that um, upload doc process to find your budget. And uh, you'll uh, make your changes in the Excel spreadsheet or whatever it is that you uploaded and upload it and submit again. Um, so let's take a, a look now, uh, Bridget, can we at uh, GAMs and see what questions we might have on this topic? I submitted a GAM, a financial GAM. It is pending, but has been returned for a change request. How do I find the communication my program manager has asked to be changed? Um, that is, um, that, that was part of, uh, probably that was submitted prior to um, this demonstration. But when you open the GAM, you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you see this grants management comments section that is where you'll find um, the requested information. Great. What if you have to do a modification to the scope of your project? For example, if you state it, you would provide services to one age group in the grant application, but realize you need to expand the age group. So there's a scope change GAM, and on our resources website, we have step-by-step -step instructions on how to use that particular type of GAM. It's, it's not any more complicated than any of these uh, that we've looked at uh, currently. Anything else? Um, let's see, I'll look at the registration questions um, having to do with GAMs. Um, I just have can the financial manager make the financial GAM change? No, only a grant award administrator can can access, initiate, and submit a GAM. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so here's a question that came across at reg registration: How do you submit sole source GAM when there are several different purchases that require approval? 
can these all be submitted under one GAM? Um, that's a question I'm going to uh, direct to your grant manager. Um, your grant manager should be involved when you're modifying, you know, attempting to modify your award. Um, often, you know, a conversation with your grant manager can uh, help to guide you towards the best submission of your modification um, in a way that, you know, it's more likely to be approved. If you, um, you know, if you submit a GAM and, and it's done incorrectly and they're going to send it back, if you talk to your grant manager first and talk to them about, you know, what they expect to see, you can save yourself some time on these modifications. So, um, it's not, it's not a bad idea to contact your grant manager anyway, but they will help you with that uh, sole source GAM. Um, let's see, I've got questions about submitting a change of scope and NCE. Um, I, again, that's the NCE um, is not a term I'm aware of. So that may be a, a program specific um, question. So that again would be your grant manager and extensions and sub agreements. Um, sub agreements is something you have to con connect with your grant manager. Project period extensions is a type of GAM and um, we'll direct you towards resources that will walk you through that process. But I think now it's it's 2.20 and I, we have about 10 minutes. I've got to, I'd like to go through closeouts and then provide you with links to, um, you know, to link to the resources uh, site. So let's talk about closeouts. And we do have a couple of questions that come up with uh, closeouts. Yes, Lisa, what does a closeout appear in a worklet, in the worklet? When does a closeout appear in a work list? Why can't I view the financial reconciliation? And can I submit a closeout prior to the award project period end date? And these are common questions and, um, and I'm glad you asked them actually. So the closeout is gonna appear in your work list the day after the project period end date. So if your project period ends on September 30th, your closeout is gonna appear in the work list for the grant award manager or administrator on October 1st. The grant award administrator will then have 120 days to complete and submit that closeout. On the 121st day, uh, Just Grants is automatically going to take over. They're going to suspend your funds, and then the closeout will continue um, in DOJ um, and, and move forward that way. Uh, as far as the reconciliation, that's one of the five requirements of closeout, and you're not going to be able to complete the financial reconciliation until you have a final FFR in completed status. So once that final FFR has been submitted, reviewed, and, and considered to be resolved, completed, then your financial reconciliation will appear. Now you can still continue processing your closeout even if that financial reconciliation is an incomplete status. And yes, it is possible to close out prior to the project period end date if you're finished with your, with your, your funding and you, you're ready to close that award. Um, I will walk you through a demonstration on how to do that here momentarily. So let's talk about a system generated closeout. This is a closeout that appears automatically the day after your project period end date. So a real benefit to Just Grants is the ability to access all aspects of the award from a single place. And this is actually also true in closeouts. Grant award administrators are gonna see um, all of their assigned awards in the work list. Um, the case data displays awards that are ready for closeout. You want to click that case ID link to open the award, and then once you click that case ID link, um, we'll move forward once the demo is ready for us. Um, there we go. The demo is going to be ready for us. So once you click that case ID link, um, we're going to go ahead and select the close out type. Um, in this case, you'll select, select probably either compliant or non-compliant. We're going to close in a compliant manner. Um, once you select the closeout type, you see the five requirements. The first one is the final federal financial report in complete status. The financial reconciliation needs to be in complete status. The final performance report needs to be resolved completed as well. And then we're going to visually check the award conditions and deliverables to be sure that we provided, um, you know, that we're, we don't have any funds on hold in award conditions and that all of the deliverables that have been requested um, are, uh, are included in the award. So opening the federal financial report is a read-only option. It's already been submitted and resolved. So you can go through and see all of the totals, um, but you can't make any changes to it at this point. We'll click close and move back. So you can um, provide comments here in the closeout for your grant manager um, who begins the closeout process. Um, and as we go down, you can, um, you, know, you can see the comments history here as well. You can upload attachments as needed. 
But when we get to the bottom of the award, you're going to see the entire funded award. And this is a real benefit because you don't have to jump around through just grants to find um, all this information. We're first going to check the award conditions and you'll see that we'll open that section of the funded award. And once we do, you want to look on the right side column where it says award and compliance. You're looking for all yeses. If you have a no in award compliance, you're going to have to sort that out with your grant manager, find out what you're missing, um, what you need to provide in order for that uh, to uh, be a yes. Um, and again, you might see if uh, with no's in the um, second to right column, you might see an amount that's been withheld based on that non-compliance. That's true throughout the life of the award. In performance management, we're going to go and make sure that all of the deliverables that have been requested are attached. Um, this is test data. There's there's nothing attached, but there, that would be really unusual um, in, in an actual award that you do not have all the deliverables. So you want to just verify those. And once you're sure that you're ready to close out, um, you can either select save and come back later and work on the closeout. Again, you have 120 days to submit this after the end of the project period, but when you're ready to click submit, then we'll click submit and that will then begin the process of uh, review and approval of your closeout. You'll see withdraw closeout only if you've closed your um, session out early. And um, there's save and then we'll click submit and that will begin the process of um, closing out. All right, so are there any questions, um, Bridget, on closeout? Not on closeouts, but I do have one on a GAM. All right, well, let's take it. Is there, is a GAM needed for changes to the source of in-kind match? If so, what type of GAM would that be? Um, there's no GAM specific to that that I'm aware of, but again, I would contact your grant manager to find out how, um, you know, what their requirements are for, for you making that change. Um, you know, I, I, um, there, there is no specific GAM to changing that source, but they may have a process that they want you to follow in order to register that, and that would be something that's specific to your program. All right, I would like to move on to resources, and I'm going to show you here in the PowerPoint, uh, we have links to all the information we covered today. Uh, the Justice Grants website houses all of the training material that you're going to need. Um, now, I'd like to go ahead and actually um, close this PowerPoint briefly and show you the Just Grants website because um, this will, um, I just kind of want to show you around a bit so that you have some familiarity with it, and then we will, um, uh, take the last, the last questions that, uh, that might have come up. So our Justice Grants website is justicegrants.usdoj.gov, and we're encouraging you to uh, open this up and bookmark it because you will use this website throughout the life of your award. Um, it's not just training, we provide all sorts of resources. You can also log into Just Grants directly from this website. Um, now, I don't have time to show you everything, but I encourage you to come in here and, and noodle around and find the information you need. I do want to open up the training um, session here, and you can see that we have a different uh, training pages based on the topic. So we have a training page for grant award modifications. We have one for financial reporting. We have one for, for performance reporting, and we have one for closeout. And because we get most of the questions about grant award modifications, I'm going to show you this one. When you open this, you get a list of um, videos that will walk you through step-by-step step each of the different types of GAMs that we have. So, for instance, we have a project period extension GAM, which is about five minutes long. We have one on programmatic and financial GAMs. This one's eight minutes long, but we walk through every single type of GAM that we offer. We also have this job aid reference guide, which when you open it, um, uh, provides you with step-by-step -step guidance in sort of a more static form. Um, and you can use this to, um, you know, to um, walk step-by-step -step through each of the GAMs. So, for instance, uh, the programmatic GAM here on page 31, if we um, scroll down to page 31, where are we, 33, um, then, we, then, then you can see we provide overview information on program, programmatic GAMs in general. And as we scroll down, 
Um, we talk about scope change GAMs specifically, and then we um, look at programmatic cost GAMs. And now here's where you start the step-by-step -step, um, guidance on each of the individual GAM types. So we provide the steps, and then we show you in the screenshot where those steps happen, um, and we just walk you through, again, step-by-step -step how to create these GAMs, um, and then how to, um, how to complete each one of those. So these uh, job aid reference guides are a really good source of information. For those of you that were interested in this budget clearance change request GAM process that we walked through uh, screen by screen, all of those steps are here in this um, budget clearance change request uh, document. And this is just step by step through that particular type of GAM. Um, so we wanted to draw your attention to that. Also um, at the top, uh, we have resources. Those of you who had questions about ASAP, um, you can find information about ASAP here. We provide, um, you know, we provide information about ASAP, checklists, we provide user guides, uh, FAQs, and then we provide you with information to the ASAP site. Um, uh, and then uh, we have a user support link here and our library of videos and FAQs. And then finally, our news and updates section where you can sign up for email updates, which we also highly recommend. So that was kind of a fast um, walk through that particular uh, website. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my PowerPoint again. Um, so um, I, I'd like to also remind you that we do have um, upcoming virtual Q&A sessions on Mondays from 1 to 2.30, we always hold this session um, for post-award management. Tomorrow and every Tuesday, we offer entity management for entity administrators and user, you know, user role assignments. Wednesdays, for those of you who happen to be applying, we have a 2.30 to 4 o'clock application mechanics session where we walk through all the steps to applying for funding. And then Thursdays from 2 to 3, we have the award acceptance um, course for those of you who are um, in the process of accepting awards. Um, you are welcome to register for as many of these as you like, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in future sessions. Um, so, Bridget, one last call for questions before we sign off. We do have two. Um, could you show us again where to click the uh, to access or to click to access the GAM trainings? And you are going to show us to find um, where to find grant award grant conditions. Uh, I, I thought we, we did kind of go through the grant conditions in the closeout section, but I am happy to um, go back to that. So the, um, in the closeout process here, and let's see, this was the demo. So the grant award conditions are found, let's see if I can find it here. So the grant award conditions are found um, in the funded award. You see this award package uh, status here on the left and the award conditions. We're going to click that and it's going to open up all of the conditions that were agreed upon when your organization accepted this award. Um, each of these things on the left it says uh, is something that you're required to comply with. And you can see here um, if there is anything in a no in the right hand column, that means that you're not in compliance with that condition. And if there's if there are funds withheld, the second to the right hand column will show you how much money is being withheld from you for not complying with the condition. Typically, um, if you read through the condition, you'll have an idea of what's required. But again, that's always something that you can talk to your grant manager about and say, I see I'm not in compliance with award condition number 32. Um, what do I need to provide for you in order to become compliant? So um, it's all there in, in the funded um, award. And um, let's see, where to click to access the GAM trainings. I can sure do that. Let me go back and share. The Google. Um, so the um, training is here, and this is justicegrants.uscoj.gov. And we're going to click the training option here, and you see a grant award modifications here. So um, you just need to go to the website and um, select the training link and whatever topic you're interested in, and you'll find here again the e-learning videos, the job aid reference guide. And then um, you'll find here the budget clearance change request as well. All right, any other questions um, at this point? Uh, I do see one that was missed, so I'm not sure of the context around it, 
but okay. it was is there a way for the portal to send a notification of when a report is upcoming um, the portal doesn't send notifications um, uh, for upcoming reports. Um, the, the federal financial reports are quarterly. Um, and uh, so you just, you know, the, the, the idea is that you should um, just, you know, be aware that you're going to get notification quarterly. Um, as far as performance reporting, I believe you do get a notification, an email notification when performance reports are coming up. Um, but you will certainly get a um, you will certainly get a notification if your performance reports are overdue, and that will come to the email address that you use as your username uh, logging into JustGrant. Now, if you're not getting those if you're not getting those notifications, you might consider um, you might consider looking at your spam or junk folders because you know, emails that are automatically generated by a computer system like JustGrant often you know uh, organizations will send those straight to spam or junk. So always check the spam and junk folders for any notifications from uh, just grants if you feel like you should be having one, but you, you haven't seen it. All right, well, it's 2.35. If there are any questions, I'm happy to continue answering. I know people have only budgeted uh, 90 minutes for this class. Um, you're welcome to stay um, if there are additional questions. If not, um, Bridget, what do you see in the Q&A and chat? I see we're all answered up. All right, then I'd like to thank you all for coming today to the session. Um, we hope it's been useful. Uh, we would like you to complete a short survey. It's going to open a new browser window as soon as you exit out of WebEx. It's five uh, multiple choice questions and one optional text um, answer, and it really helps to guide us towards bettering um, the, the, um, the training that we're able to provide once we know more about what you, um, what you appreciate and what you don't. So please uh, take some time for that if you would. Thank you for, for your participation, and we hope you have a great remainder of your day. Thank you.